Hey Z-Stars, what's good in the proverbial hood? It's your girl Zara, popularly known as FXR, and I'm finally back with another video. Now today, we're going to be going over the very simple steps to actually grow your hair exceptionally long without a lot of effort. Now I have a very simple method that's going to help you get on track and get over some significant growth plateaus, so stay tuned and enjoy the ride. But of course, before we get into the video, please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think I'm going to talk about. Be sure to share this video with your friends and your loved ones. And last but never ever can be least, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. Now, without any further ado, let's get right into this video. Growing natural hair and any other type of hair revolves around these five very basic principles. These principles are going to be represented by an acronym called FRIENDS. Now the first principle is protection. Principle number two is health and hygiene. Principle number three is retention. Principle number four is nutrition. And principle number five is stimulation. We're going to go over each principle one by one and I'm going to help you all to understand why each is very necessary to having an extremely healthy hair regimen. This is so much more than just protective styling. Protection also means not exposing your hair to excessive manipulation, that you're not exposing your hair to too much water, which leads to a host of issues, that you're not exposing your hair to too much heat, and you're not exposing your hair to the elements unnecessarily. So that could be the sun, that could be rain, that could be snow, etc., etc., etc. The list goes on. Protective styling is a very important component of this particular part of my little formula, but it's not the end all and be all. It's not the only thing. The same way that you use sunscreen to protect the skin from the sun, there are things you can actually do to protect your hair from certain elements. I mean, there are products with SPF. Yes, your hair also needs sun protection. You can also use penetrative oils to fortify your hair against certain damage. Grease occludes moisture, helping the hair to stay hydrated and staving off breakage. You can also use a gel as a cast to prevent your hair from being exposed to dust, heat, and other hair stressors. Now I want you all to keep this in mind as we continue down the list. Next, we have health and hygiene. A lot of people neglect this aspect of hair care or think that they're covering it, and they're really not. Now, I talk a lot about health and hygiene of hair in my recipe Bible, and many of the recipes in that publication actually enhance the health and the quality of the scalp and the hair. It's going to be linked in the top right corner for your consumption, and it's currently 20% off. Now why health and hygiene are important is because it ensures that your scalp is really, really, really healthy. That doesn't mean cleanliness alone. That means free of any bacteria, free of fungus, free of parasites, etc., etc., etc. Basically, it means ensuring that your scalp microbiome is balanced, healthy, and that your scalp is free of debris, free radicals, etc., etc., etc. Now, cleansing, of course, is a huge part of maintaining the health of your scalp microbiome and maintaining your scalp health in general. Because, of course, when your scalp is adequately cleansed and properly healthy, your hair grows out of it unobstructed and more quickly. There are, however, certain scalp conditions that require more than just cleansing. If you have a fungal infection, for instance, you may need to medicate topically and orally. If you have psoriasis, there are also other things that you may need to do to ensure that your scalp is healthy. This is why health and hygiene are so necessary. It's more than just keeping a clean scalp environment. It's also ensuring that your scalp environment is balanced pH-wise, that you don't have parasites again, you don't have fungus, and your bacteria is not imbalanced. All of these things contribute to having very, very clean, healthy hair and a clean and healthy scalp. Oh. 
Now next is retention. Now a lot of people are much, much wiser to what it means to actually maintain the hair on your head and how important and necessary that is to seeing gains in length long term. There are still many, however, that do not actively seek to pamper their hair, especially the ends of their hair. Maintaining the hair on your head, ensuring that it's as healthy as can be is the only way to ensure that you're seeing consistent inches. Hair never stops growing, unless of course you have a medical condition that causes your hair to stop growing. But if you're not actually retaining and maintaining the hair on your head, you will not see that progress. Breakage at the rate of growth is the reason why a lot of people are still struggling to get over certain growth plateaus. Now this is probably my favorite category and that is nutrition. Now this is actually one of the most important components of having a healthy head of hair, of having beautiful skin, a beautiful body, of being youthful and so much more. It is often neglected in the natural hair community. Now a lot of people do all sorts of things topically to grow their hair, but they neglect vitamins, minerals, other nutrients, whole food intake, water intake, and other things that nourish the body from the inside. A healthy diet rich in vitamins, minerals, and nutrients is the only way to ensure that the hair that grows out of your scalp is exceptionally healthy. A lot of hair growth is not optimized simply because there are a number of people eating very poor diets. Again, eating whole foods dense with nutrients and even supplementation will ensure that all of your bases are covered. Topically, high doses of nutrients are also actually very beneficial to the hair and the scalp. People often try to discredit the potency of teas, oils, masks, and etc. But it's very obvious that limited studies and research have yet to reveal the potency of these traditional hair care practices. Now, personally, I'm all for <laughs> believing that the anecdotal evidence of hundreds of years cannot be completely fallible, let's be real. And the positive experiences of many women, men, gender fluid and non-binary people says that these things definitely do aid in hair growth. After all, if topical application of products like finasteride and minoxidil can actually have a positive effect on the growth of hair, then how far things that are found in nature like rosemary or nettle or horsetail. Anyway, time will ultimately tell, but I strongly back these natural remedies to hair loss. Obviously, I literally wrote a book about it, so. <laughs> Again, you guys can check that out in the top right corner. Now the last letter in our acronym is F and that's for stimulation. Stimulation is a major key because stimulation ultimately increases blood flow to the scalp, which allows the hair follicles to be bathed in blood rich with many nutrients. When the scalp has a lot of blood flow, the follicles get a nice distribution of nutrients which enable the hair to grow more quickly. They also enable the hair to grow stronger and in a way that is more dynamic and more optimal. Massage is one of the most traditional ways to stimulate the scalp, but there are also substances that can be applied to the scalp that stimulate blood flow and encourage dilation of the blood vessels. Now, if you all would like me to make a comprehensive video on those, then please drop some red emojis down below. Now, when it comes to these principles, our little acronym, FRIENDS, <laughs> a lot of people don't actually understand, or if they do understand, they don't have an easy way of keeping track of all of these principles and ensuring that they're doing them on a regular basis. Now, this is definitely maintenance, but it can be very simple maintenance if approached the right way. Now, as far as I'm concerned, a consistent balance of all of these principles is the only way to optimize your hair growth truly. Now, I've obviously been able to do this over the past two years or so, and I've literally seen upwards of an inch of growth monthly when I'm extremely consistent. Now, this is huge for me because for a long time, I struggled with my hair and I was unable to see significant gains. I maintained a steady growth plateau for several years, no cap. <laughs> 
Between breakage and frequent trims because of breakage, I was unable to get my hair to reach down my back, but now it does as a result of what I've been practicing. Now, how I've been able to actually maintain this and keep track of these principles is by using a calendar. I initially made it, but when I introduced more Ayurvedic practices into my routine, I prolonged it to a three month calendar to ensure that my little Ayurvedic treatments were accounted for. Now my hair is low porosity and I have a very sensitive scalp. My scalp issues are pretty much handled, so I didn't really need to do much when I was creating my calendar for myself, but I did create a low porosity one to ensure that my hair would be treated exactly as it needed to be treated. Now my regimen consists of regular cleansing, re-moisturizing, exfoliation, both chemical and physical, stimulation using massages, oils in my recipe Bible, rinses in my recipe Bible, masks in my recipe Bible, and other treatments in my recipe Bible, vitamin intake, and a few other things. Now this calendar has actually changed my hair regimen completely and made it really easy for me to maintain my hair without really stressing myself. I gave it to a few of my friends and they loved it too. I wasn't planning on making it available, but they encouraged me to because they too have seen significant success with a streamlined and consistent regimen. So what I've done for you all is I've provided you with four of my calendar. There's a low porosity version, a high porosity version, a sensitive scalp version, and an oils and butters free version. This calendar is a three month calendar that also consists of tips and tricks on how to use the calendar. I'm so excited to finally present to you my 16 page hair growth calendar. It comes in four different variants, the low porosity, high porosity, sensitive dry and or troubled scalp, and no oils, no butters. If you've struggled to pin down a routine, this is the solution for you. I can't wait to do this challenge with you all and we'll definitely be making more content all about this calendar. I've also provided for you my favorite vitamins as well as some of my favorite tools to use so you can make sure that this calendar actually does what you need it to do. It's usually $10, but I'm offering it to you all for only $5, which is a whopping 50% off. And I can't wait for you all to try it and let me know what you think about it. It means a lot to me. And again, I wasn't going to make it publicly available, but because the people around me encouraged me to, I decided to share it with you all. So I hope that it helps you as much as it's helped me and as much as it has helped them. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to be showing you all how I do my hair, how I ensure that my hair is really beautiful and really healthy, how I've managed to get it to be much thicker than it used to be, how I've managed to get over my significant growth plateaus, and so much more. Please drop some pink emojis down below if these are things you're open to, and please also comment down below and let me know what you wanna see from me. That's really a major key because I can't make hair videos for you if I don't know what you all want to see. I also have a new channel. This channel is going to be exclusively hair. I have another channel where I talk about lifestyle and my experiences in Nigeria. So go over there, check out that channel, subscribe, and be sure to turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video on that channel. Now, if you've made it this far, you've made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop some blue emojis down below if you got to this point. Please also be sure to, of course, thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends and loved ones, and last but never least, subscribe to my channel and turn those notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. I love you all so much. Thank you for always supporting me. Thank you for sticking by me and for generally just being wonderful people. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. And until then, ta-ta.